MIT Media Lab is about how technology and society come together. So it's always the intersection between the two. The technology is changing the business model. I mean, first it was things went from analog to digital, and then they went to multi-screen, and now you get this mixing between all the different things that used to be separate media into one more or less coherent experience. And of course that means that all of the traditional sort of disciplines in media no longer really exist because they mix together in people's minds. So what Ogilvy and Mather needs to do is become much more seamless and create experiences that match the increasing seamlessness of customers' lives. The ability to move between different cultures, different languages, different screens, different media. We're brought up to think that the org chart is God. We're supposed to only talk to the people in the team. We're only supposed to do certain sorts of reporting. And all of that destroys the serendipity that gives rise to creativity. It's the diversity of conversations that gives rise to creative output, not the reporting up the ladder type of a functionality. So the reporting lines and the org chart are exactly wrong for getting creativity. Informal networks are the things that happen outside the org chart and outside the official meeting. And what I've been able to do is actually measure that. And it turns out the informal stuff really does matter in terms of hard dollars and cents. You have different traditions within the company. You'd like them to work together. And to do that, you have to become very aware of the flow of ideas within your organization. And I think the key there is, is that each person needs to understand that stealing ideas from the other guy is good. It's going to make you a champ back home. So if you're a storyteller, you can learn from some of the tricks that the experienced guys have. If you're in the experience business, some storytelling tricks could really help out. And as people begin to have ideas flow between the two camps, you reach a better reality, a better way, more holistic way to think about things. It's also getting in touch with who you are as a person. I mean, you're all people. You all live in the real world. You know when an idea really touches you. It's losing that veneer that you have as a professional and getting back to who you are as a person and looking at the things that resonate with you there. You might ask, what are the biggest barriers to idea flow? And I think the first barrier is this big man, lone genius theory. If everybody believes that good ideas come from sitting alone or from the guy with the biggest salary, then you're not going to have idea flow. All you have is the same things again and again and again because people by themselves are intrinsically not as creative as when they're embedded in a flow of different ideas. The second thing is that management has to give time and actually credit to people who go out and explore for different ideas. And the thing they need to do is to get out of their normal limited sort of domain and learn from other people. That's really the biggest challenge. I've done research looking at dozens of corporations, entire communities, entire countries, and looking at creativity, productivity, uh, the rate of innovation in these organizations. And the thing that's most surprising is it's not about the training of the people. It's not how bright they are. Those are not the first order terms. First order term is, do they talk to each other? How broadly do different communities interact with each other? Most creativity takes a collective. It's not what happens between your ears or the other guy's ears. It's what happens when you bring those ideas together. So in high performance team, members are actually listening to each other only about half of the time, and the rest of the time they're in side conversations. The other thing that's really important about a high performance creative team is that it have different sorts of people with different attitudes and different experiences. It's something that I call the charismatic connector. They're interested in everybody and all of the ideas. They're not prejudging things. They're trying to find what's really out there. And they're genuine in this because they know that that sort of is the, the, the raw ore that they can bring back and refine into gold. So the one thing that they're not is hierarchical, clubby, or elitist. Today, everyone gets very excited about electronic media as a way of collaborating. But what the research shows is that actually it's face-to-face -face that's the most valuable. And the way to understand that is that's the ones that's most nuanced. You can say something and roll your eyes at the same time and people know you don't really mean it. 
If you try that in email, there's going to be misunderstanding. The big danger of this sort of idea flow is that we often find ourselves in a world of echo chambers, fads and panics. You actually have lots of flow, but there are very few ideas. That's called groupthink. Everybody's saying the same thing. Individual incentives are not a very good way to get people to work together or to get the sort of creativity that you want. Social incentives, where you pay the team for working together and having results, is a much better way to do it. So the three big learnings are the value of informal networks drives the performance of an organization. The informal stuff really does matter in terms of hard dollars and cents. Two, creativity takes a collective. It doesn't happen alone. Three, the energy with which you explore and engage with others is key to success.